Hello and welcome to DigiLink's course Introduction to Python for Linguists. My name is Petra Bago. This lesson covers a new data type, lists. Lists are mutable data types, which means that they can be changed, updated, without creating a new object. Lists are written in square brackets. We have already mentioned a few times that lists can be initialized. Lists have elements, that is, if they are not empty lists. The elements in the list are separated by commas. They are a sequence data type, which means that the order of the elements is important. This also means that we can index and slice lists. The values of the elements in a list can be repeated. And finally, elements in a list can be of any data type. They can be integers, floats, booleans, strings, lists, dictionaries, and so on. So lists can contain lists. Indexing and slicing lists is very similar to indexing and slicing strings. Python uses zero-based indexing. So the first element of a list has index 0, the second element has index 1, and so on. We can also use index minus 1 to address the last element. One thing that is new is that we can index elements within the list, if the elements can be indexed, that is. Look at the last example on the slide. We want to index the letter A in the word spam. The string spam is the second element in the list, so we write index 1. Now we want to index the third letter, so we just write next to the index 1, in new square brackets, index 2. In this way we could go as deep as we needed to. Slicing works the same like with strings. We can define only the starting index, or only the ending index, or both. We can also use positive and negative integer values and combine them. Since lists are mutable data types, we can update them. That is, we can change existing elements. To do that, first we have to address an element. We have to index an element. Then we have to assign to this addressed element a new value. As in the example on the slide, we have updated the last element, which was a boolean value, to a new string element. As with strings, we can do concatenation on lists too. That is, we can link two or more lists together. For this, we use the operator plus. If we concatenate list 1 and list 2, the newly created list will first have the elements of the list 1, followed by the elements of the list 2. As you can see here on the slide, no list is being updated. If we wanted to store the result of this operation, we have to assign it to a variable. We can also call the function len on the list. It will return the number of elements of the list. Look at the right example on the slide. Here we call the len function on the second element of the list. The second element of the list is a string with value spam. So the program returned the length of the string, which is 4. We will cover three methods we can call on lists the append method, the insert method, and the remove method. Unlike the methods called on strings, these methods make changes to the original list. The append method adds a new element at the end of a list. Calling this method will change the original list. The append method takes one mandatory argument, and that is the element we are adding at the end of the list. Let's look at an example. We have a list 1 with 5 elements. We have a list 2 with 2 elements. If we call the append method on list 1 and append the list 2, 
The list 1 will now have 6 elements. The 5 elements from the original list 1 and the 6th element will be the list 2. We can again add an element that will be added at the end of a list. The insert method inserts a new element to a list to a specified position. So we can tell the program that we want to add a new element, but unlike with the append method, with the insert method, we can tell it to put it anywhere. The insert method has two mandatory arguments. The first one is the index number where we will add the new element, and the second one is the element we are adding. For example, again we have a list 1 with 5 elements and list 2 with 2 elements. Let's call the insert method on list 1. And let's say we want to uh, add the list 2 in the third place. So we put index 2 as the first argument. And then we put list 2 as the second argument of the insert method. Now the list 1 will again have six elements, but the first two will be from list one. Then the third element will be the list two. And the fourth, fifth, and sixth elements will be the rest of the elements from the list one. The final method is the remove method. As you have probably guessed right, the remove method removes the first occurrence of an object from the list. So not all, but the first one. It takes one mandatory argument, and that is the element we are deleting. Like the other methods called on lists, the remove method also makes changes to the original list. Let's make a list 3 that has 6 elements. Two elements are repeated. We have repeated the string Terry. If we call the remove method, on the list 3 and define the mandatory argument as string Terry, the program will remove the first occurrence of Terry. The updated list will now have five elements. The first occurrence of Terry is removed, but the second occurrence is still there. We have covered a new data type called lists and some methods we can call on lists. Let's look at some code.